always hard But spring is coming soon Love's never so We decided to start the night with a brand new That's song brand new. <laughs> that we've never performed in front of anyone, so high fives for that. We don't normally sweat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <you know. laughs> it's great to be back here at Two Way Street. Uh, and, um, this is uh, a song that I wrote years ago. I lived out in Montana for a while, Missoula, Montana. I went to grad school out there for ceramics, which is why I do folk music for a living. <laughs> and I moved back to Iowa. I I'd, I'd left somebody I was madly in love with still in Missoula. And I moved back to Iowa. And so I thought I'd surprise her and drive all the way across the country to surprise this woman. And she I was surprised to find out she was in Seattle that weekend. <laughs> I was like just wandering around from Missoula writing songs. This with her old boyfriend, right? Yeah, she was just with her old boyfriend too. <laughs> Thank you for that reminder. <laughs> A little dagger twist. <laughs> anyway, she lived on Patty, this road called Patty Canyon Road that, that spun outside of Missoula. If anybody's ever been to Missoula, it's surrounded by these great little foothills and mountains and um, so I was I actually had dropped off my buddy at the trailhead and my brother they, they were like yeah we'll go on this for a hiking trip but you can do your love thing and they I dropped them off and I walked to like six miles of town to find out that news and I wandered back up that hill six miles just defeated and, but there's these little purple flowers and gold flowers on the hills so I uh, wrote this song called Patty Canyon Road Flower into the 
So uh, we started playing together, Catherine and I, only a couple years ago, a few years ago, I guess. So we we just decided to call ourselves a duo because we started co-billing and working on each other's songs so much. And uh, so we're working on our first album after all these years of performing music. It's my first duo album. So excited. We're releasing that this late this spring, maybe early summer. And this is not on there. <laughs> we are going to play some tunes yeah. from that album. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's called Broken Leaves. We wrote this in uh, Missouri. You can find inspiration in Missouri. <laughs> Secrets we 
tune we ever wrote together and uh, we wrote it after a show that we did in Kiyosakwa, Iowa in this little hotel and uh, that night we wrote three songs after that show together for the first time and kind of realized we were in love with <laughs> what we were doing so um, this is called Number of the Stars Came with this, you came with this line, you're like, number the stars, I want to write something about that. All I could think of was when I was a child, riding with my family, my mom was a single mom, she packed all four of us kids and my aunt, and they were in their early 20s, my, my mom had four kids by the time she was 23, she's a saint for living through that. She raised us herself, but my wild uh, aunt, who was an art major as well, uh, they'd go on these trips throughout the country, pack us in this little escort station wagon. And I remember st sitting in the back at night, everyone was sleeping except for the driver, and I'd just be looking out the window, looking at the stars, and that's, that's what this stirred in me, so that makes it into this song as well.
So, yeah, I'm, hi, I'm Catherine, by the way. Uh, this is Chad, and we're really happy to be here. Um, we're going to do a tune of mine that I, I was kind of a weird kid. I grew up listening to the 30s and 40s jazz standards. I was, like, super in love with them. Anybody else? Big fan? Okay, cool. Good. <laughs> Not just the weirdo, like, 32-year-old in the room? Okay, good. Um, yeah, I just fell in love with the harmony and, and the romance of it all. And um, by, I don't know, age eight, I had like every major standard you can think of memorized. It was just bizarre. Um, but my, my dad would always find it really entertaining. He'd put on like XM radio um, when we were on a drive somewhere. And it's like, gosh, I can't believe you have the words and melody memorized to like every song that comes on. Um, but it was kind of a weird obsession, but. Uh, this tune that we're going to do of mine is is a jazzy, uh, or one of mine that is kind of tribute to that part of my childhood. So this is called Love of Mine. See the flame growing, keeping me warm as I'm finding a way to the road I missed. Never knowing that those stars in the sky would decide to realign and make that love of mine, love of mine. It's a little less endearing. <laughs> it's a relationship song called Mystery to Me. I don't know. That's, this is uh, an old song of mine that I recorded down in Nashville. I've lost it all. I've acted 
crazy talking to shadows on the wall. Anywhere as far as the eye can see. But darling, you're still a mystery to me. I touched the touchstone, turned lead to go. Walked a million miles in another man's shoes through the cold. Learned all I can from the high society. But darling, you're still a mystery to me. To your heart read away. I'm an open book, easy to read. But you got secrets that you keep. So walk away if you're not sure. I can't sit and wait outside your door anymore. You need to know right now what's in store for you and me. Darling, you're still a mystery to me. A lot of new stuff and old stuff. We are. But not current stuff. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll get into those in a second. <laughs> um, I'm a Wisconsin native. Is that offensive or good? I realize we're in Illinois, so I don't know. I don't know how, how things are. Okay, good. Great. Um, I, uh, yeah, there you go. Um, we, I, do I always get this wrong? We wrote this one going th through. Wisconsin, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I always get that wrong. Um, this, is, uh, this whole area of the country is so beautiful and inspiring, you know? The nature is just breathtaking, which maybe is part of why you all are here, because I know you're not here for the cold. <laughs> or maybe you are. Thank you all for thinking that's funny. That's good. 
It's just that a few <laughs> things you're thinking about over here. Uh, we're good, we're good, we're good. All right, 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 right. Um, Oh, and this one does have a, a little tribute to, um, you all know the tune of Shokin Farewell? Yeah. yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Between Old Miss and the Blue, the Driftless and you, I spell bound for an hour or two. Sometimes I wonder just where did you go? Oh, sweet Sarah, I miss you so. I'd stay in this old house, nestled between the rock and the woods. If you never come to this place where we loved, oh sweet Sarah. So we were down in uh, North Carolina uh, playing a festival, a songwriter festival down there. Antlers and Acorns, these two were there. <laughs> Bird and Lucy, we met in the most random way years ago in a coffee house that, uh, in, in Lyons, Colorado. And I just happened to be passing through and saw there was music and coffee. And there was a musician playing, John Fulbright, and all oh, these yeah. great players. <laughs> And oh, yeah. Bird just happened to be sitting next to me, and we're like, oh, yeah, this is great, isn't it? And it struck up a conversation. And so thank you for spreading the word and coming tonight. Appreciate it, you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, 
we were down there for this festival, and on the way down, we thought we'd stop by the Carter family fold and uh, sit and soak up the Carter family creative juices. And everybody's down there on a Sunday afternoon, so I mean, it was really cool. Uh, we, we sat down and we just started writing. We wrote a few songs just sitting there in, on the picnic table. So, and no, people would drive by and go, oh, there they are, strange, a bunch of hippies. From, from Yankee hippies. <laughs> but uh, we wrote this song. This is called Tall Virginia Tree. If you want to do the other one. <laughs>
Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll do one more here. Take a break. Before Catherine intros this song, we'll, I'll just mention the merch over there. There's a lot over there going on. We got T-shirts, books, CDs. On the left is Catherine's new album, which we played "Love of Mine" off of there, and uh, some great songs on there. You'll hear some more in the second set. And then I've got some artwork as well. I put, I painted that big one back there just this last week. I finished it and thought I'd bring it on the road with me. So. If you're interested in buying original art, it's there. Yeah, Chad's like insane. He's tapped into every part of his artistic being. It's pretty incredible, so. Not really. <laughs> yes, really. Still got some. <laughs> no. Oh. Soon to come. <laughs> we'll do this one last one here. This is a Catherine song. Yeah, I... Uh, I'm a classically trained string player. Um, that's That was a lot of my life until the last six years. And actually, this, this it's interesting, because like this instrument, I wasn't even a, a, a violinist. I was a violist. That was like my, my thing. So I did undergraduate master's degrees in classical viola. And uh, then I toured for a while with a group, kind of like a Celtic women group, and then moved to Iowa and... Somewhere around there, I bought a violin from this lady over here, Darlene Ribas. So this is actually, a, this was her violin, which it's always cool when I, and a little scary when I get to play it in front of her. When she, this was like her baby for a long time, you know. Um, but yeah, so I, I walked into a blues jam in Iowa, and then it all just kind of went wild, and I just let go of the classical world, to be honest. I took the things I felt like I needed to take from it, um, you know, all the, the technique parts of it, and then just walked away from the perfection and stress part of it. So, um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> there's no other way to put it. We can talk if you want to afterward, if you uh, object to what I'm saying, that's I fine. Same experience um, with me on the harmonica, actually. <laughs> <laughs> walked away from that world. <laughs> <laughs> make mistakes all the time now. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> uh, well, my, both my parents are, are uh, retired high school choir directors, and so I, I was getting, like, comic cards from my mom at performances, you know? Like, that was the kind of vibe it was. And so, so living in this kind of state of being now is so good. It's so good. <laughs> so anyway, um, this is a blues tune I wrote, because blues is the reason why I started improvising, so this is called Black and Blue. Buy me flowers and kiss me sweet You better hold on to me tight, my baby Or I'll fly away in the calm of the night Beating hearts, feeling black and blue from loving you. Sing me songs and twirl me around. Give me a love like no other can or knows how. Ooh, my baby. No, I can't stop love. So black and blue. Mm -hmm. 
to me tight, my Too. Thank you. It's just like they said, they'll be back. <laughs> we won't let them go because they are way too good. Oh, thanks, Josh. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'll take a short break, stretch your legs, washrooms are out the door if you're left. I never start when there's a line for the washroom or if somebody's buying merch. That's right. <laughs> So yeah, we'll be back uh, as soon as we can. All right, bye. What is your five-stringed instrument? Oh, I should talk about that. I will. I'll talk about it. Um, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'm, I'll make sure I talk about it. I promise. Yeah. Good question. <laughs>
Chad, when they start writing songs. <laughs> How many years ago? Well, yeah. a year before that, right? Probably four years ago. Yeah. 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 Sorry. It's true, though. <laughs>
April 5th, <laughs> April, we have Tim Grimm here on stage. I suspect that's going to be a full house. Make sure you get here early. <coughs> Jennifer, am I missing anything? She always says no, and then I go back to her and I get the look. <laughs> Lighting. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I, I set him up, she knocks him down. <laughs> so, if you guys are re are you guys ready? Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Well, then, let's take it away. Uh, thank you, John. Thank you.
Is one that will be on the album. <laughs> We're finally doing ones that will actually be heard. Yeah. On next album. Be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This next one too is a little bit of a sing along. Does anyone like singing in this room? Okay. Well, we're making it really easy on you because there aren't any words. So uh, we'll just look at you and smile when it's your turn. Does that sound like a plan? Great. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Chad and I have a, a habit of 
writing songs either during sound checks or directly after shows, which is probably what we'll do after this, to, to be perfectly honest, and maybe play that song tomorrow at our show, like yeah. Maniacs. Um, we read them on the way to gigs, too. We wrote one yeah. on the way to the gig, actually. We, did, we, did we, we, we definitely won't try it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a hard no. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but this is one that we wrote. Um, there's a really wonderful house concert series um, up uh, in Maple Plain, Minnesota. It's called Sundog Farm Concerts. It's in this beautiful barn. Um, and we play there a couple times, and every time we go, we just... There's something in this house. I don't know. Y'all ever just feel like really inspired by a certain place that you're in? You know, this is one, this is one of those. And uh, so I think that we wrote like three tunes. Or was it five? We wrote five. Oh, those five. Those, yeah, sorry. Five tunes that day. Yeah. We play about two of them. Right? Yeah. Yeah. This is probably the third one we wrote that day. Just got recording this one. We finished recording. Pieta Brown sings harmonies on it. No Pieta Brown at all. Uh, Greg Brown and um, that whole family. Yeah. weird. I think I bought this thing I don't even know like two or three years ago this mandolin and you know they're tuned the same way as violins so really like the, the curveball is that you hold it like a guitar and you use a pick <laughs> instead of a bow um, but my goodness this thing has become like an obsession for me. Not because I'm like oh my gosh I want to like do crazy bluegrass runs or anything but um, this particular instrument was built in, in um, Missouri and uh, I don't know, I just, I'm obsessed with this thing, so. I love it. So we use it a it's lot. A great <laughs> she does a good job on it oh, too, right? Nice. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's, it's also really easy to write songs with this yeah. while she's riding shotgun. <laughs> Which we did today. Yeah. We were uh, 
down there in North Carolina, and it was this morning, the, the mist was just on the mountains, and uh, we were, had this beautiful view where we were staying, and this living room was like, had the, this view of the sun coming in, it's cobwebs in the trees, and everything's drenched in dew, so we wrote this song. I had this line, as soon as I woke up, I looked it out, and I saw these stones just dripping wet, and I said, well, I should start a song that says... Do you know that the stones in this place like to cry? And then we just went with it. And it turned into this kind of a family homage song that's called Oh Carolina. Did you know that the stones in this place like to cry in the morning? All the wet will do. And the sun likes to shine through the webs made at night by the spiders tired from the work. Chased away all the ghosts that came in the night. Now all I see are the webs glistening in the willows in the sun. Uh, 
Uh, this is off my latest album. I, I went down to Fame Recording Studios in Muscle Shoals to record one of the albums. So, yeah, I was excited about getting down there. And of course, we were scheduled in March 2020, so we had to change this, the whole date. But Bo Ramsey and I went down to uh, Alabama to do this, and I had two of the original Swampers on that album. And I was really, uh, really thrilled to be able to work with some of the legends down in this legendary room. Um, this one, the song I wrote though out in California when my friend uh, who grew up with me in a small town in Iowa, um, he's like, you should write a song about uh, scooping the loop. Have you ever heard of that phrase before here? Okay, it's like cruising, you know, back and forth. In our town, it's just a loop. You just keep going. It was like internet before internet. You know, you find out everything if you go scooping the loop. What's going on with your friends? And uh, I was like, there's no way in hell I'm going to write that song. <laughs> I don't want to. Because I had really mixed feelings growing up in this little conservative little town. And my mom was a single mom, a teacher, raise, raising us four kids. She was a, a very hardcore feminist. And uh, I was the only guy in the high school locker room quoting Gloria Steinem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I had very mixed feelings and different take on the scoop in the loop situation in my little hometown. But I thought, well, if anybody should write it, it should be me, because uh, I can maybe address some of those things that I saw and I was conflicted about. And, um, so this is a song called Bible Belt Saturday Night. perfect pitch. <laughs> For me, it's not a burden. <laughs> Let me make sure I do this. No, I, I, honestly, it's not the perfect pitch part. It's like, yeah. I, I tune pianos too, and so I've been doing so much of that, so like my in. ear is just like freaking out at like every pitch that happens, so. Yeah. Anyway. How about this one? <laughs> surprise me I, I, when we were in route when we, we were about to leave town before for some some little runs little tours um, I've had people ask me if I can bring my piano tuning gear and tune in the town but if you want someone you should hire my dad in like a month when he heals from surgery anyway yeah. this is a Bible Belt set. Take it easy on the throttle, man, it'll kick your ass. Broken pop bottles and Coca-Cola glass. Down by the station where your uncle worked was the only car wash in town. Where all the towny boys on their Saturday nights with their rolled up sleeves, just fixing for a fight or a roll in the back of a deviled out detailed 74 Monte Carlo. They were singing, Oh, baby, got a love machine Scooping that loop on American Dream Oh, maybe the best I ever saw Was a Bible Bell Saturday night Disagree. Oh, and Jim would pull a souped up truck by the car. 
He cranked up the stair, I think it was fishing in the dark. I never saw the county boys dance like that. As they echoed all across the town, they were singing, oh, baby, got a love machine. Scooping that loop on American Dream. Oh, maybe the best I ever saw was a Bible Belt Saturday. Shoved it all down neath an airtight lid. I kept my universal mind from the brutal kinds of the racists and the homophobes. Because that's where we grow up in the undisturbed middle of America with not a word. Stevie smoking against the stars, the stripes, the convoluted rebel flags. They're all singing, oh, baby, got a love machine. Stupid man. Some red-headed teacher from further east, a teacher of art and music, a real prairie hippie preaching. MLK, Bob Dylan, Woody Guthrie, man, she set that shit down on fire. And I took it as an omen, I learned to fly, and I didn't look back till I was so high, looking down on the town where I once grew up, saying, look at that pretty string of lights, they're all singing, oh, baby, got a love machine. Scooping that loop on American Dream. Oh, maybe the best I ever saw was a Bible Belt Saturday night. Oh, maybe the best I ever saw was a Bible Belt Saturday It said that I grew up in Wisconsin. Janesville is my hometown. Does anyone know where that is? <laughs> okay, so like two people. Cool. Um, well, uh, yeah, you're right. You know where the interstate is. Yes. Um, <laughs> there you go. Um, I. Uh, lived very close to my elementary school that I attended growing up and and would I, it was a b bit of a not a bit of I was a loner kid for sure um, I mean I had pet ants there was one time where I I went out to the backyard and and uh, I guess my childhood best friend was with me you know so this, this isn't a super loner one but the <laughs> The next morning part sounds like it, but anyway. So we set up a house for these ants, and and uh, woke up the next morning and found that they were no longer there, and I just bawled my eyes out, you know. Abandonment issues, apparently. <laughs> Hashtag abandonment issues. Um, but uh, I also had like a rock collection, and uh, I had porcelain dolls. That, which are really creepy, if I'm being honest. Like, like I'm not sure what I was thinking. I just, yeah. Um, but I would, I would go to the playground because it was very close by, and it was in a day and age where we weren't afraid of where our children were walking to. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and I would go and I would sit at a teeter-totter and fully realize that that is not a one-person activity. Um, but I did it anyway and thought a lot about life, <laughs> as one does at age eight. Um, I think part of it is because of my dad. I have a dad that just turned 80, and he and I would have really pretty deep conversations <laughs> from a pretty young age, and so I was thinking a lot about questions that I had about life. And so this tune is called Teeter Totter.
is a fun one. N nothing serious with this one. <laughs> I wrote this on the banjo as a bluegrass song and sat in my journal for 10 years. And what happens when a bluegrass song sits too long, it becomes a blues song. So, <laughs> this is uh, called Headed My Way. Thank you. 
couple more up here. <laughs> Oh, this is a pretty new one, <laughs> too. We, but we've done it a couple times. Don't worry. It won't be a total train wreck. <laughs> it's all good. Um, uh, I wrote this for a dear friend of mine that sometimes forgets how beautiful he is and needs a little reminder. And I think we all have those people in our lives that need those reminders. Actually, I think we all just need those reminders. Yeah? Uh, and, uh, so this is called Songbird. It's okay to let it all fall away. It's okay to take a deep breath in. And even when you can't see your beauty within, I'll be here to tell you again.
Thank you. Oh, I think we have one more. And then we're going to... Yeah, thank you so much, to everyone. <laughs> Let's give the staff here a big round of applause, all the volunteers. We feel so welcome coming in here. Tim, John, Jim, thank you so much. Thank you all for coming and listening. Man, it's so nice that we're listening room. Yeah, these <laughs> rooms are like the bread and butter of everything. Yeah. Yeah. This has been going since the early 70s, is that what I heard? Man. is a song called Barnes on Fire. I should also talk about this thing. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I realized. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, so this is a combination between a violin and a viola. I still have to figure out the <laughs> what kind of technical name I want to give it because people typically call these electric violins and that is wrong. Um, because it's not a, just a violin. It's also a viola because it has five strings, and so you got all the strings of both instruments on here. And uh, this one is really fun because it was a custom build by a, uh, one of my best friends who lives in Nashville. His name is Kyle Pudens, and he's a great utility player musician himself, but also is a luthier on the side, because that is the thing. Um, and so he actually builds seven strings of these even. So he's got ones that go lower than uh, cellos, <laughs> which is cool. So. I'm probably going to get yeah. one of those at some point because, like, the lower the notes, the better, if yeah. you ask me. But um, it was really fun because I was able to choose every detail, you know, the kind of wood, the stain, the knobs, like, everything about this. And um, so I, I said to him, I, I need this to sound not like a screechy violin, you know. Like, I'm not saying all violins are screechy. This thing is my soulmate, that <laughs> instrument is. But, like... Um, yeah, so he, he was like, all right, well, let's, let's do some, some spruce. So, so he built this from 100-plus-year-old spruce from an old piano, which is really cool. Um, and the process usually takes him, like, three months to build, which is really fast, if you ask me, considering he's a full-time touring musician himself. Um, but he, it took him twice as long because he kept having to restart parts of the process and so he kept calling it Lucifer. So I call her Lucy. So this is Lucy. Um, and she only comes out every so often in the show because she's a little, a little sassy. So um, she's, she's haunted. Yeah, she's a little haunted. <laughs> There's that too. But anyway, so this is, this is Lucy. So if you want to meet her after the show, you're, you're welcome to. I can introduce you. Um, so if you touch her... You Take that home with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tune up real quick. It's like Annabelle. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we specifically choose Lucy for certain songs, and uh, usually it's the dark, swampy ones. You know, so it has that dark tone on it. I want to give it up for my, one of my best friends here, Catherine Severing Fox. <laughs> in the Midwest, I think, because this is about a barn burning down. I've been playing it for 20 years, this song. And uh, it's changed every, every, every performance it changes, especially now with Catherine and I having fun with this song. But I have played this in barns, and one time a barn burned down after the concert. Well, it caught fire. It didn't go all the way down. So. And then one time I was on this place in Clear Lake, Iowa. It was, the, it was this boat that they call, uh, I think it was called the Queen or something. The Lake Queen. Princess. I think you're haunted. Yeah. <laughs> Just being honest. And I sang this song as the closer. And I kind of joked around, when the boat's on fire instead of the barn's on fire. And it caught on fire. It was on the news. I got home and I went, no. Be careful with this song. So, talking about past tense here, this song. Smoke and the ashes, never 
Thank you. Larry Ramblers here. <laughs> so, uh, I, Chad, Chad and I have a, have a secret which, uh, you don't, that you don't know about. Am I on? Am, am I? Oh, good. Any first off, Tim Grimm next week. Get here early, it'll be busy. Um, but more importantly, here it comes. Are you ready, Chad? <laughs> I told this to Chad, so it's going to be a mystery to you. But no one gets out of the coffee house without an encore. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So un unless he spilled the beans. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> Do you have just by chance one more? Sure. Yeah, I would love to. All right, go for it, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. That just sounds nasty. <laughs> Thank you all again for coming out and supporting Thank you. original <laughs> music. It's yeah. really a beautiful thing they're doing here, so <laughs> appreciate you all being here. Well, every time I'm in Boone, uh, North Carolina, I apologize to Doc Watson for this next song. Because I totally ripped off some of his licks on this. This is a song called Dirty River Catfish Blues. And I uh, was living in these places like Montana and Northern California. All these places have these crystal clear rivers and streams. And to be honest, at that time of my life, I was just missing the smell of mud. And those like flat, as one does. Yeah, as one does. And those flat, brown, barely moving bodies of water <laughs> we call rivers here in the Midwest. Thank you. 
deep Where the vein wants the church All the holes he left I can't fill There's a diamond in the rough I am not No, I'm more like that big old bottom feeder that you caught Yeah, I can't sink and I can't swim Catfish feelings back again oh, Dirty river clean my soul Thanks so much. Thank you.